like you hear from rain country god is good all the time and i'm here today just to give you a few tips when it comes to food storage and food preservation now i'm going to have a lot of videos that will be single topic linking you i'll be linking you back to or even playlists so these are just some thoughts i compiled together things that you should consider as you get into food storage or as you continue to preserve your foods and build your food storage no matter where you are on this just some things to consider and the first one is when it comes to your meat so this is a more expensive thing and if you're not raising your own animals your own livestock so that you have a continuous supply of meats or you're not able to go hunting or fishing looking at ways that you can stretch what you have so i have a full series i did several years ago about making the most of leftovers and this is mostly about meats so let's say you're cooking up a whole salmon or steelhead uh some kind of beef elk or venison roast lamb roast beef roast and you take that meat and you can make many many different dinners out of that that can last you a week two weeks depending on the size of that particular thing and the size of your family obviously so please make sure you check out my playlist on that it's just to give you a few ideas of ways you can stretch that and then also um ways that you can add to your protein sources now we know that especially for those of us who are not vegan or vegetarian that when it comes to certain nutrients like b12 vitamin d and certain other things those can only be found in animal products so a lot of us find those important however there are ways that we can still get protein from other sources such as beans lentils nuts and seeds so um, consider adding more of this if you don't already have it into your food storage of course we always hear beans and rice when it comes to food storage so you, you likely have already already know about that and have already considered that and beans and lentils can be a very inexpensive way to get these into your food storage but one thing that you need to know about stocking up on dry beans is that they can continually get harder and harder through the years and become impossible to cook up now some people say adding baking soda or something to the soaking water will help i haven't tried that even if that doesn't work you can still take those beans and grind them up and use them as a flour however what i recommend is what i do with beans and i have a video on this too is i'll cook up whenever i'm making chili or some kind of bean dish like my what i call tar heel beans that go you know we have cornbread i'll cook up a massive pot of it then i'll take the excess and dehydrate that up and then vacuum seal them into jars now i know those beans aren't going to go hard so instead of always um pulling out a jar of that then i'll do the same thing until I work through a bag of beans and then I can start working off of the stuff that I've dehydrated and it's already ready. All I got to do is add water. It's almost an instant meal. Just add water, cook for a few minutes, and now I have those dishes ready to go. The other obvious point that most, that most of us have heard over and over again is making sure that you store what you and your family enjoy to eat. So a lot of times when people first get into food stores, they just start putting up everything. They might put up a whole bunch of beans and rice and find out they don't like beans or rice. Maybe they put up a bunch of canned foods and find out that they've never tried before and find out they don't like that. Or maybe they already know they don't like it, but they put it up because they think, oh, this will be a good thing for us if we're starving. Well, you really want to have foods you're going to eat also not just for the sake of in a hard situation you don't want to be stuck eating things you hate but also to have something that you're going to continually rotate through so you can keep your pantry with as fresh of items as possible even if your canned goods and so on can last for 20 25 years it's still highly recommended to always keep rotating through your food so for example i grow like to grow a lot of green beans that can also be used as a dry bean and every year well except for the year i'm giving my garden a rest but every year i'm growing them i'll can up a whole bunch once i've got them all canned up then i'll go rotate all my beans in my food storage so i'm working through the oldest ones that might be two years old and the newest ones are put in an area that's less accessible as the uh, older ones so that way i can just keep so that way i keep working through them that way and that's just an example and the next point is adding joy to your food storage so for me i have uh organic chocolate chips vacuum sealed into jars they can last for quite a few years that way again i rotate through those though 
I also stock up on the single ingredients to make my homemade chocolates myself. And that is, you know, raw cacao and cacao powder. And I have a whole playlist on making your own homemade chocolates that I'll link to down below. So it doesn't necessarily have to be totally unhealthy. You can put up some really tasty things that will add joy to your food storage, but can also be in a healthier format. One of my very first chocolates I ever made, I used raisins instead of honey or sugar to add sweetness to the chocolate. And it's that's a pretty healthy way to do it. And then obviously right along with that would be adding flavor to your food storage. And you can do this in, in almost any place you live, no matter how small it is. And that is growing some herbs, herbs that have a lot of flavor that you can use to add to your different dishes, your, your beans and rice to add more flavor and change up the taste of them. So food fatigue is less likely to happen. So that would be thyme, rosemary, oregano, sage, basil, and so much more. So your favorite herbs that you like to use in cooking or stocking up on things such as chili powder, um, cumin, and all the other things that you prefer to use in your various dishes. And then consider your a lot of your staples, aside from, you know, obviously the grains, if you're gonna have grains like whole grains, which will store longer than the ground ones, um, then you're gonna wanna make sure you also have some sort of grain mill or, <coughs> or even a blender that will work well for grinding that up. Any blender can grind your grains, but how fine you get it is going to depend on what you have. So a blender might, a standard blender will just make kind of a coarse flour or meal. Whereas I think the Vitamix, you can get it to grind up pretty fine. And then I have the Country Living Grain Mill, which now is way more expensive than it was when I bought it. But it is made in the U.S., in fact, made right here in Washington State. The reason I love that grain mill is because I can crank it by hand if there's no power available and I have the time, or like I do now, after a couple of years of having that Patrick rebuilt an old motor and I hook it up to the motor and just run it that way. And that's why I like that grain mill because I have those options. But there are other grain mills that are a lot less expensive that you can purchase. And anybody who has some thoughts and suggestions on that, um, please go ahead and put those in comments down below. Anyway, aside from those kind of staples, your rice, your grains, your your beans, there's also things like sugar and salt. And so stocking up on these things can be important, even if you're one that's like, oh, I'm, you know, sugar is a toxin, you know, it's poisonous. Sugar is a necessary part. It, you're, there's healthy forms such as honey, maple syrup, and even organic cane sugar can be a healthier form than your standard processed white sugar. They can also be good barter items. So for me, I stock up on organic cane sugar. That's the blonde. It still has some of the uh, molasses in it. I also have molasses. I don't use it as much, but I have that on hand. And then I have a lots of raw honey and lots of maple syrup that I, and with the maple syrup, because that's the only one that might develop mold on it. The rest, sugars don't spoil, but maple syrup, because it has, tends to have more water content, it can develop mold on top. But if you vacuum seal it into jars, there should be no concern. Or if you cook it down into a thicker syrup. I highly recommend making sure you have those. And the same thing with your salts, look at stocking up on your healthier salts rather than your stripped out white salts. Three of my favorites are the, well, my two favorites are the Himalayan pink salt and the Redmond real salt. The nice thing about the Redmond real salt is to me it has the best flavor but it's also mined here in the US. It comes from Utah, but it can have a little bit of grittiness to it where your Himalayan pink salt, I've never had any grittiness in it. And then the Celtic sea salt is very salty, but I like to use that one when I'm canning. Those are all gonna be higher in your natural minerals and why they're a healthier choice. And by the way, I get my Himalayan pink salt and I think the Azure Standard also sells the Redmond real salt on their site. I get all my grains there now. I get um, all my seeds and nuts there now. I get some of my dehydrated fruits and stuff there. And, uh, but I'm starting to get more of my spices and, you know, salt, pepper, and so on from there, That things that I don't already grow. And you can always find the link to Azure Standard in the description box below. And then one of the big things that um, I wanted to bring up is sampling preservation methods. So whether that be you do something like if you're interested in dehydrated and freeze-dried foods, but are not wanting to buy a whole bunch or buy the equipment for these things until you know whether or not you like them, Mother Earth Products is a really great place 
to look for these things because instead of like co companies that like to sell their dehydrated and freeze-dried goods in number 10 cans and then you buy that just to find out you don't like it, Mother Earth Products actually sells sample sizes. So you can try all their different things that they have in sample sizes to first find out if you like it. And then at that point you can decide is it if it's worth it to go ahead and invest in a dehydrator but also know that dehydrate, I say this all the time, um, a lot of people, especially if you live in a dry climate, you can dehydrate pretty much anything without any special equipment. You can also use your oven. Um, in the wintertime, I use my wood stove to dehydrate with. In most cases, you won't, you really don't need a dehydrator unless you're really trying to up the amount of dehydrated foods you're putting up. And then freeze dryers are really expensive. The, as far as uh, food preservation, freeze dryers are your most expensive uh, equipment to buy, most expensive and time consuming to maintain and to also to run. And so that's something that you want to also take into consideration before you make that investment. So, but it could be worth it to you. If you like a lot of things freeze dried, then it could be worth it to you. Where for us, there's just not enough freeze-dried foods that we like to want to invest in something like that. So I don't have a freeze-dryer. I even turned down the offer for a freeze-dryer. And if you're interested in learning more about why, I did two videos, one one year, one the next year, when I came up with even more reasons why I don't want a freeze-dryer that... You know, so you can do a more balanced because there's a lot of people talking about freeze dryers and how much they love them. And that's great. It's just always a good idea to hear two sides of the story because I've heard lots of negative feedback about freeze dryers, people who bought them and use them. And I just have my own reasons why I'm not interested. I did do my research first, though, and also trying out the freeze dried foods first before I said, you know what, I'd rather just keep buying some of the tropical fruits and have that as that's the special thing I can add to my food storage. You know, the pineapple and the, the bananas and the mangoes. So I can powder those up and use those to add flavor to things. But I like, when it comes to snacking on, I like all those things better dehydrated than I do freeze dried. So, well, the pineapple I can go either way on. Just depends on the texture I'm looking for. But the flavor of both of those is really good. But uh I prefer mango dehydrated, but I prefer bananas dehydrated. But to powder up and use as flavoring to make pies, icings, and more, freeze-dried is nice when it comes to those. And those are things that I just can't naturally grow here. So that makes sense for me. If I'm going to do something, I'll just stock up on those because it's going to be more cost-effective for me to do that than to invest in a dehydrator or freeze-dryer just for a few things. So... Um, that's what I mean is sampling things before you make either the investment of buying a whole bunch of it or investing in the equipment or like when it comes to canning, that's something I still recommend everybody have at least the basics like being able to water bath because you can get into that without it having to cost an arm and a leg. However, um, you also still want to sample things. So for me, my favorite way to have preserved green beans is to can them. Um, I've tried dehydrated, I've tried freezing, I'm talking about green beans from my own garden, and they're all good, but the canned I find I like the best. But just because I like canned green beans doesn't mean that I would then like to can all my carrots. Uh, maybe I'll, I do a whole canner load of carrots and find out I don't like canned carrots. I do, but I actually am finding I like uh, my dehydrated carrots better than my canned carrots. And that might be the same with you. So it's still nice having the canned carrots on hand for just an easy, quick, oh, I need a side vegetable. I'll just warm these up. Here we go. <laughs> but um, uh, for adding to soups and various things, I like dehydrated better. Let's say you're wanting to can a batch of something you know you already really like, and but you're considering on canning something like carrots or maybe some um, ground beef or whatever, do just a small jar along with the other things that you're canning and then sample it and then see if that's something you want to add to your food storage. If you like it, you can add, do a whole canner load of that. Or you can say, you know what? I don't like that enough to want to can a whole bunch of that. I think I'd prefer to dehydrate it or freeze it. But obviously we don't want to depend on a freezer to always be there for us unless we have a backup source to run it. Such as like with us, we have solar power. We can run our freezers most of the year off solar power. 
Um, we do, even though we have public power, you know, we use both. In wintertime, we depend more on public power. Sum um, summertime, we depend more on our solar power. But in the case of a power outage in the middle of winter, which is most likely when it's going to happen, we also have generators we can run our freezer. But if you don't have those options, and then you need to consider doing all the other methods where the stuff can be shelf stable without needing to be frozen. And so canning, dehydrating, freeze drain, drying are going to be the choices then for you. And then I just want to say on the meats, I, I want to, you know, when it comes to preserving your meats, I love canned meat. I have lots of canned meat on hand, but I have found my favorite way now to put up meats is to dehydrate it. However, not just in the form of jerky. If you take like um, any kind of meat and you try to just dehydrate it, whether it be from a raw or cooked form, it's going to turn out very tough and chewy. You're going to have a jerky and that's fine if you'd like that just for snacking on. However, if you want it to be something that will easily rehydrate and you can use in soups, sauces, whatever, casseroles and whatnot, then the best thing to do is to cook up the meat. So that same thing, remember like I was talking about the uh, making the most of leftovers, uh, and maybe you don't want to cook anything right away off your leftover meat, then take that meat, whatever's left over, stick it in the freezer, let it freeze for at least 24 hours, take it out, and then spread it out. I recommend cutting it up first if you haven't done that yet. Because um, then at that point, you can just spread it immediately onto your trays or let it thaw enough to where you can get it spread out on your trays. And then dehydrate it. And then that meat will turn out very light and crispy and it will rehydrate so much easier. And uh, then you can vacuum seal it in jars and now it's shelf stable and takes up less room than the canned meat. So that's just another option I wanted to throw out there too. So now what I would like from you is if any of you have some other tips or suggestions you would like to throw in here, whether it be people that uh, it's for people who've been putting up food storage for many, many years and would just like some fresh new ideas or people who are getting new into it, please put those in comments down below. And don't forget to check out the videos or playlists I'll be linking to in the description box down below by clicking on more or show more somewhere down here below the video screen so you can find those links. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.